Hi guys and welcome to a new, another video on this tutorial on data mining the social media with Python. And today we are going to talk about the structure of a tweet because in order to work with the data in a, in, to, in a tweet we need to understand the structure of it. And a tweet is a complex object and the table that you see on the screen provides a list of all its attributes and a brief description of their meaning. In particular, the content of the API response for the particular tweet is fully contained in the underscore JSON attribute, which is loaded into a Python dictionary. So let's go over the attributes, the underscore JSON and this is a dictionary with the JSON response of the status. The author attribute, this is the tweety.models.user instance of the tweet author. And then we have the contributors attribute. This is a list of contributors if the feature is enabled. Then we have the coordinates attribute. This is the dictionary of coordinates in the G GeoJSON format. Then we have the created at attribute. This is the date time dot date time instance of the tweet creation time. Then we have the entities attribute. This is a dictionary of URLs, hashtags and mentions in the tweets. Then we have the favorite count. This is the number of times the tweet has been favorited. Then we have the favorited attribute. And this flags whether the authenticated user has favorited the tweet. Then we have the geo attribute. These are the coordinates. And this is deprecated. So use coordinates instead. Then we have the ID attribute. This is the unique ID of the tweets as big integer. And then we have, let me scroll down a little bit. Then we have the ID underscore STR. This is the unique ID of the tweet as string. Then we have the in reply to screen name. This is the username of the status the tweet is, is uh, replying to. Then we have in reply to status ID. This is the status status ID of the status the tweet is replying to as big integer. Then we have the in reply to status ID STR. This is the status ID of the status the tweet is replying to as string. Then we have the in reply to user ID. This is the user ID of the status the tweet is replying to as big integer. And then we have the in reply to user ID str. And this is the user ID of the status the tweet is replying to as string. And then we have the is quote status attribute. This flags whether the tweet is a quote that is contains another tweet. Then we have the lang attribute. This is the string with the language code of the tweet. And then we have the place attribute. This is the tweety, tweepy dot models dot place instance of the place attached to the tweet. And the possibly sensitive attribute flags whether the tweet contains a URL with possibly sensitive material. The retweet count attribute is the number of times the status has been retweeted. The retweeted attribute flags whether the status is a retweet. The source attribute uh, is the string describing the tool used to post the status. And the text attribute is the string with the content of the status, the tweet itself. And the user attribute uh, is the tweepy.models.user instance of the tweet 
author and it's also deprecated so use author instead so the attributes that holds an id for example user id or tweet id have a counterpart where the same value is repeated as a string this is necessary because some programming languages uh, most notably javascript cannot support numbers with more than 53 bits while twitter uses 64 bit numbers and to avoid numerical problems uh, twitter recommends the use of the str attributes so we can see that not all the attributes are translated into a python built-in type such as strings or booleans in fact some complex objects such as the user profile are included completely within the api response and tweepy takes care of translating these objects into the appropriate model and now we are going to look at some examples and this example showcases a sample tweet by the packet publishing uh, company which is one of my favorite companies where i buy books from so a big shout out to them and in this sample in the original json format as given by the api and as accessible via the underscore json attribute several fields have been omitted for brevity of uh, this example so i just had to fix the formatting on in my markdown so firstly the creation date in the expected format is as follow as you can see here and then we have the entities attribute is a dictionary that contains different lists of labeled entities for example the hashtags element from here shows that the python hashtag was present in the given tweet and similarly we have photos and we have the urls and we have the user mentions So it gives us very good data to work with when we are going to analyze it. And the next is a description of attributes that are well described in the previous table and shouldn't require much information to be understood. We can notice that the geographical information for this tweet is missing we can also compare the previous information about the entities with the actual tweet stored in the text attribute and the user attribute is a dictionary that represents the user who sent the tweet in this case packet pub this is the screen name of packet pub and as previously mentioned in this uh, mentioned this is a complex object with all the user related information embedded in the tweet again it's lots lots of information favorite count follower count following friends count so this example shows two interesting aspects to consider when analyzing tweets as follows the entities are ordered already labeled the user profile is fully embedded uh, the first point means that 
entity analysis is simplified as we do not need to explicitly search for entities such as hashtags, user mentions, embedded URLs or media because these are all, all provided by the Twitter API together with their offset within the text which is the attribute called indices and the second point means that we do not need to store user profile information somewhere else and then join merge the data via foreign key for example the user profile is in fact redundant redundantly replicated within each uh, tweet So one note on working with denormalized data, the approach of embedding redundant, redundant data is related to the concept of denormalization. While normalization is considered a good practice in relational database design, denormalization finds its role in large scale processing and databases that belong to the wide NoSQL family. The, the rationale behind this approach is that the additional disk space required to redundantly store the user profile only has a mar marginal cost, while the gain in, ter in terms of performances obtained by removing the need for a join merge operation is substantial. So this was the cons construct of a tweet and the information and data that is provided and that is going to set us up for analyzing the tweets in a later video so this is it for this video guys and if you like the video please like uh, hit the like button and please do subscribe and do comment if there's anything else uh, you want to know or you are wondering about so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video where we are going to talk about how to use the streaming API see you guys in the next video